I'm 99.9% .9 sure I won't get shot, but I'm not 100% sure I wouldn't be. Nine times out of ten, I'm not even interested if I get a bird, to be honest. If I, if I get under them, I get under them. If they're too high, they're too high, you know? But the hair's got in the back, you, know, you just, it's just the noise, it's just everything about it. The village of Fintorn is a small coastal village on the northeastern side of Scotland. Just before the village itself is a vast mudflat, and this bay, Fintorn Bay, has become the epicenter of a, an ongoing conflict between two local communities, that of the wildfowlers and of the locals. Every year, Huge numbers of geese migrate to this location. About five years ago, it used to be grey lag geese and now it's predominantly pink-footed geese. At their peak, when they first start arriving in September or October, numbers will reach 50 or 60,000 birds. This whole area behind me is black with birds. And then as those birds continue to migrate south into the central belt and into England, the numbers kind of come down and plateau at around 10,000. Wildfowling has a rich tradition within Scotland and within the community. It's been going on for centuries. Because there are just so many birds, wildfowling doesn't really affect the populations all that much. However, having 10, 20 wildfowlers set up across this bay creates a huge amount of noise. And this has created a dispute between the community and the wildfowlers. Sue moved up to Scotland six years ago and moved into the park, which is part of a, an eco village based just outside of Fintorn. And Sue and her friend Spencer have taken it upon themselves to make their way down to the bay every single morning to stand in front of the guns. I heard the geese. I have no idea. I have no idea. I heard them in the night. And they started coming into my consciousness then, really. Living at the park there, the, the, the noise, the sound of all the guns going off in the morning and at night time, like it sounded like a war zone. The noise, the shooting, the, the uh, unregulated, the, 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 everything that shouldn't be, you know, do, happening with geese and ducks was happening in the bay. There's no permit system and there's no bylaw. And there was people come up from all over the UK to shoot. Yeah, if say these geese were flying up there and, there was, and they were gonna come in this direction, we'd come around the side, well away from the shooters, and we'd go up out a bit or along the side. And as the geese take off, they'll see you and they'll just turn direction. Legally, wildfowlers, if they're presented with a civilian in front of their guns, they have to lower their weapons. This is a loophole that the antis have kind of manipulated in some ways. As soon as they hear a, a gunshot, they will head out across the muds and stand in front of the guns, forcing the wildfowler to put down his weapon. Martin is a local wildfowler. He took up shooting in the 80s and has been shooting on this area ever since. Martin manages the local Facebook groups that surround the local wildfowlers. This is something that's not just newly started. Um, back, back even when I first started to come up here in 1986, 1987, you'd get the odd person coming down here and trying to interfere. I mean, we've had guys standing behind you with yellow slicker suits, rain suits on, and waving their arms, come down here with flags 
suggest and then it just intensified over the years. I mean, you even look at the, 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 the sign over here, it says that there is shooting down here. If you do see anybody with a shotgun, please stay clear. That doesn't happen, you know. They mm. will stand beside you, they will surround you because they know that we've got to unload the gun, just leave it away. There was whole crowds of us at, uh, f for a while, but it probably takes a lot of stamina to keep coming out in all weathers. But it came for me like a bit of a ritual of some sort. Set the alarm, get up, make a flask, come out. I know my rights. I have a right to be here. Everybody has a right to be here, whatever you're doing, whether you're shooting, dog walking, walking in the bay, bird watching, or um, peacefully protesting. Being here every morning, means that I witness everything that happens here. I think the ones who shoot for the pot are in a minority and I've seen far more what I would call bad shooting practice. We do get people that, that come here and we have had to have words with. We've spoke to um, as local wildfellers, not as anything else. We've spoke to them and said, look, try and wind your neck in because you know what you're doing is no 100% right. I mean, we're all here for geese, but um, try and keep your shot limits, try and pick up after yourself, try and, like, help the area. And, uh, yeah, it puts money into the community. The business coming from wildlife watching, bird watching, is eight times higher than those that come and shoot. But those that come and shoot will not stay in the in the good, decent B&Bs. They'll probably stay in a caravan or, or um, something out for to, a, to a, like, a, mm. a cabin or something like that. I think they're intimidated by our presence. And actually, the visiting shooters come for a week, two weeks. They don't live here. And they don't know what it's like to live here and have it week after week after week. So I've still got a lot of resolve to come out every day. Mm. You look at where these people have came from. They're not local. Mm. They stay local, but they're not local. Mm. And all they want to do is come down here and cause a nuisance. I mean, there's not one of them get a Scottish accent, all right? There's not one of them local. But come down and watch it. I invite anybody to come down here and watch what happens. I'm 99.9% .9 sure I won't get shot. But I'm not 100% sure I wouldn't be. Because actually, I'm not sure about the mental health or the aggression or the... There's, um, there's this kind of masculinity that is the hunter, the wildfowler, camouflage mm. behind nets, and it's a bit... Nine times out of ten, I'm not even interested if I get a bird, to be honest. If I, if I get under them, I get under them. If they're too high, they're too high, you know? But the hairs go up in the back, you, know, you just... It's just the noise, it's just everything about it. You know, seeing them, and then... You do respect your quarry. Let's not forget here, they've taken their life, you know. But with the population of geese that's in here and the population that actually get taken, I mean, it's just, doesn't even touch it, you know. Doesn't even touch it. We don't mind. This is what people, I mean, I get a lot of flack on social media from locals saying, oh, murderer and all the rest of it. But I've asked people, come down. Just come down and, and watch what goes on. See what happens. Yeah, I have heated moments with Spencer. I have heated moments with Sue. During mediation, they picked up pretty quick on that. They've got a bag, this infamous bag. And it's full of cartridge cases, it's full of wads that apparently has been taken off of here. Mm. I've got over 5,200 spent cartridges and wads, and I think I've got around about 20 live cartridges that I've collected over the last six years. But when, during mediation, we said, take it in, take the bargain. We're under camera, I mean, we're, we're standing here. Show us it. Still waiting to see it. One of the other 
aspects that is obviously on everyone's mind at the moment is avian flu. And what's apparent when we're walking around on this mud flat is that avian flu is very present. There's a bird I'm just about to walk up to which is already displaying the signs of avian flu. Lethargy, disorientation. Normally they seem to have a bit of a cloudy eye, but this bird is clearly unhappy. Having spoken to both parties, and neither party will give up on their belief. The antis think that the shooters are stopping people from coming down and enjoying wildlife, and the shooters think the same of the antis. I'm, I, I'm very humble about this. I don't think I'm some sort of heroine. I just quite quietly quietly just do it. Generally the police come to us first and say why, why, are, you, why are you doing this? Why, why are you putting yourself under threat? Why, why would you do that? And I'd say well I have a right to be here but actually if I'm in front of them my rights to feel safe overcomes their right to shoot. They should just leave their gun. If they keep calling the police <coughs> this season so be it. If they arrest me they arrest me. I'm going to carry on. And uh, maybe if I get arrested, it'll be more publicity and more people will come out. <laughs> if you look around here today, there are no dog walkers or bird watchers. It is just quiet. And it might be that this issue, this conflict has affected the area to such a degree that people just don't want anything to do with it. The Fintorn Bay is stunning, it's beautiful. Aside from the geese, there are curlew and red shank and all kinds of wildfowl. It's a red listed species area and so, you know, it's something that I think people should be able to enjoy without fear of getting in the way of this, uh, this battle of wills, as it were. We'll see.